If you thought the news of the Battle of the Billionaires, Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg's cage match was intense, then you haven't seen some of these moments from Hell's Kitchen that were way more intense. Like this chef, who switched to boss mode right in the middle of deliberations. I'm seriously done. I am done. Oh yeah, you better believe that these were not empty threats. Well, he was really trying to dominate here, guys. So what happened is the blue team had just lost the Indian cuisine challenge. Now I get it, losing the service can be a real downer, and it tends to stir up some intense emotions. But let me tell you, Bryant took those emotions to a whole new level. When the blue team was discussing who to eliminate, things got pretty heated between Bryant and Aaron and Sade. Things got so bad that it soon escalated into a fierce argument. Yo, bro, heated right now, dude. Yeah? Yeah, you. I don't know why you tonight. I'm talking to you. Dude, what's with the attitude, man? Now, I'm not sure what good came of this meltdown, but it did lead to some hilarious comments. Like, take a look at this one right here. Well, if you ask me, I think he did sound like he was trying to win a rap battle. Okay, so for those of you who have no clue what went down, Brian's first confronted Aaron, demanding to know why the guy didn't listen to him. Which is when Aaron, trying to explain himself, admitted that he wasn't as organized as Sade. But Bryant wasn't having any of it. He accused Aaron of being incapable of cooking and listening at the same time. No. Fuck you, you, dude! Dude, that no. you ass fuck you. see what responds, no. Meanwhile, Bryant turned to Sade and suddenly thought of nominating her for elimination. But this led to another awkward argument. You see, Bryant really thought he was being intimidated. But you know what? Insecurity is loud. Confidence is silent. And in this moment, Sade definitely showed more dominance with her composed attitude and clever sarcasm, especially in contrast to Bryant's inability to keep himself together. In a fit of defiance, Bryant challenged the blue team to nominate him, boasting that he'd survive anyway. But Aaron hit back, saying that nobody with such a lousy attitude could ever be an executive chef. And after listening to something like that, Bryant wasn't one to back. Yeah, we're calm. I'm dominant more than you. That's why I'm standing. You're what? More dominant than you. Yeah, pretty cringe, man. It was quite embarrassing, honestly. And this whole thing even made him come across as immature and petulant. Although Bryant claimed that he was just talking to Aaron like a grown man, his behavior didn't seem to match up. Well, at least Bryant picked a fight with his teammates and not Chef Ramsay. Okay, so here's the thing. Some of these moments are from almost a decade ago. That doesn't make them all right. Of course, people have become more aware and accountable now, but if being sensitive is controversial, so be it. Go f yourself, you stupid c Okay, now I know some people throw around the C word way too lightly, looking at you Australians, but there are also some people who find it degrading. In the 13th episode of season five, we find Andrea taking charge of her brigade. They need to be cooked further, Scott. How much longer? 45 seconds longer in a hot pan. Come on, make that story happen. You see, Chef Ramsay's directive was clear, and it was her moment to shine. With her characteristic energy, Andrea wasted no time in making her presence felt, setting a blazing pace for the kitchen. The dishes were flying out faster than ever before, thanks to her quick coordination. However, the pressure was unrelenting. Her first major test of quality control came when sous chef Scott mistakenly sent up halibut instead of the requested John Dory. So's the Dory. Let's go. Pieces were small, I gave you one extra. Thank you. Thank you. So what happened is Andrea's attentiveness was put to the test. And unfortunately, she didn't catch the error before Chef Ramsay pointed it out. Stop, stop. Taste the fish, because it's not Dory. Serious? It's halibut. It was a slip up that stung, an oversight that she couldn't afford at that point in the competition. Determined to rise above her mistake, Andrea shifted into high gear. She became meticulous, examining each plate with a discerning eye. This newfound vigilance, while aimed at ensuring perfection, began to ruffle some feathers. Sous Chef Scott in particular found himself on the receiving end of her pointed critiques. Tensions escalated and Andrea's insistence on precision led to a near explosive confrontation with the sous chef. I'm telling you right now, I'm gonna fucking punch her in the face. Was Andrea being nitpicky? Take a look at this and let me know what you think in the comments below. 
They need to be cooked further, Scott. How much longer? 45 seconds longer in a hot pan. Yeah, but that's what Ramsay asked her to do, right? Sous Chef Scott was way over the line here, and it did not sit well with viewers. Like, this viewer here thinks some of his jabs are just way out of line and have nothing to do with their cooking skills or where they messed up. Some of them have rightly pointed out that he was overreacting big time. This viewer right here has got some strong opinions where he thinks he was probably just flexing for Ramsay, trying to be all like him, but we all know he's nowhere near as cool as the Chef Gordon Ramsay. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. But guess what? It's the same vibe that caused sous chef Scott to be unpopular amongst the audience. Threats of physical abuse and gendered insults are in no way healthy and shouldn't be normalized. It's a sign of being in a toxic workplace. Yeah. Something along those lines happened next on my list for today. Shut the f up and cook. Keep your mouth shut. Yes, chef, and cook. Don't talk, because he's only going to put his foot deeper in your ass. Totally, man. She's spot on. Nobody talks back to Ramsay. But someone had to learn her lesson the hard way. Siobhan thought her scallops looked just fine, but not even her own teammates believed her. Stop. Stop, will you? I thought they looked fine, chef. You thought they looked golden brown. They were black. Siobhan, however, was persistent. Or should I say delusional? Fine, chef. So where's the fine ones then? They're right over Where here. Where are they? Where are they? Oh, girl, quit already. After seeing this, Ramsay didn't hold back from using his razor-sharp tongue. The damn thing was unseasoned and boiled beyond measure. And to top it all off, he had to bestow upon her the illustrious title of this. Get out! Get out! Get out! Get out! Get out. The punishment didn't end there, now did it? Ramsay actually commanded her to eat her mistakes in the dining room. Sadly, this whole ordeal proved to be Siobhan's undoing as she was eliminated that very episode. And you know what? I think she knew it all. However, this argument between Ramsay and Giovanni in season five is the stuff of legends. It is like the angriest version of the celebrity chef we've ever seen. Look at me, look at me, eyes! Not as pissed as I am! You donkey! No. The drama unfolded during a high stakes dinner service where Giovanni was holding down the meat station. But here's where things took a turn for the worse. Giovanni couldn't resist the temptation of constantly opening and closing the convection oven. Ramsay warned him that his actions might have consequences later and boy was he right. Giovanni's first blunder was sending up Ben Whaling's chicken special. But guess what? There was a raw drumstick on the plate. Yikes. He pleaded for one more minute to refire it, but it was pretty clear he had no clue how to make the dish in the first place. But Giovanni's attempts to redeem himself only resulted in a chewed up drumstick on the plate. I mean, why the hell did he even send that out? Chicken from the dog here. That's your special. Yeah. Ramsey was obviously not amused. He informed Ben that his special was being ruined because of Giovanni, and he even gave him quite the nickname in the heat of the moment. Ouch. Giovanni, of course, argued that he was not the said endearment, which of course only made Ramsey even more furious. Giovanni said this wasn't going to break him, and honestly, kudos to him for that. I would have probably crumbled. Trying to get away with it! Now I'm ready for an argument! Sending me that! You should be ashamed! Uh, but yeah, he did really have a lot to be ashamed of that day. Now, here's my take on this. I think contestants on Hell's Kitchen have signed a deal with the devil because the verbal abuse is part of the show, and honestly, it's endless. Some insults are funny, others extremely creative, but then there are those which are straight up offensive. Which brings me to the wedding planning challenge in the fifth episode of season three. We are cooking for a wedding reception. And this time, Ramsey flipped the script, ditching his role as judge. Instead, he handed the reins to the bride and groom, Carlota and Cyrus. Melissa's face twisted and she dared to protest, but Ramsey shut that down quickly, determined not to let her sour vibes spoil the couple's big day. Right now, little lady, you are not gonna spoil it. Bring the appetizers forward. 
and do as you're told. And then came the time for the chefs to line up and woo the couple's taste buds. And this time, Brad and Melissa led the charge. The men dished up a crab salad, a zesty thyme and grapefruit delight, while on the other side, the ladies crafted a puff pastry with brie and strawberries. Decision time came, and the couple leaned towards the crab, calling the pastry more dessert than appetizer. Score, men won, women zero. I think the flavor's fantastic. I think everyone would love this, actually. Cyrus, what do you think of that? Strawberry. I think this is very good, but it is very dessert-like. Round two, fish frenzy. Josh and Julia faced off against each other. The men tackled sea bass with an herb swirl and veggie broth, while the women countered with collard greens and bacon-kissed sea bass. But here comes a surprise twist. The guy's fish got a thumbs down for being fishy. This is just a little bit strange. <laughs> Foam. I mean, you just can't make this stuff up, you guys. Meanwhile, the ladies snagged the win with a sea bass sensation. Well, you saw what happened there. The game was now tied, and the pressure was mounting. But then came the culinary climax. Rock prepped the men's meat marvel while Melissa tugged Jen's apron. But Ramsey had enough of that. He snapped at Melissa, and you have to watch this to believe it. Melissa. I don't know what you're trying to do, whether you're trying to upset our guests, but right now, I'm starting to get pissed. But just then, Jen trotted out the women's dish, and disaster struck. Describe the dish. That's a duck breast. That was utterly humiliating. Easily one of the worst dishes served on the show, don't you think? And what was the verdict, you ask? That disaster sent the woman's efforts down the drain. While the men seized the challenge two to one, Josh rejoiced in the men's overdue victory. And what do you know, just as the couples exited, tension cracked. Now that we're all caught up to speed, here's where things start getting explosive. It was time for Ramsey to unleash his wrath, and he chose to do so by labeling the women this. You four hell's bitch. Ugh, that was totally unwarranted, really. And I hate to see Chef Ramsay doing it. Like, this Redditor pointed out how the man is too comfortable calling women bitches. Listen, you stupid fucking fat mouth bitch, bring me a ticket here. And, of course, this moment right here. You're turning to a right little bitch. Labeling a man as a bitch often upgraded to Little Bitch, carries heavy insinuations. One that suggests he's embracing behaviors traditionally associated with <gasps> women, which apparently is a bad thing. That's why it isn't a very neutral insult. No matter which way you slice it, it's putting women down. Then again, it changes depending on who's saying it and how they're saying it. Context is important. Women are reclaiming the word, calling themselves a boss bitch, or a bad bitch. Sometimes it's also used as a term of endearment, as wild as that seems. But I mean, I've definitely heard of it being used like that, but in no way is it okay for a man to angrily bark that word at a woman. Then it becomes offensive. And this Redditor right here is the kind of person who wanted to call out Ramsey and give him a good lesson on treating women with a little respect. So Gordon's got this whole TV act going on and people are just going like, oh, it's just his high standards, man. Pulling shit like that and calling them high standards is just absurd. There's a thin line between giving people a little push so they reach their highest potential and downright abusing them in the name of it. It's almost sadistic how he treats the chefs and it's about time we called out his nonsense. Am I right or what? And by the way, if you weren't aware, our guy has a reputation for being a misogynist. You see, back in 2010, Ramsey had this interview with Sofia Vergara. And let's just say it didn't age well. It was not very modern for a family man to act the way he did. Nowadays, you can't just get away with saying anything and everything, like you could back in the day when this was filmed. People are more tuned in to what's acceptable behavior, and let's face it, Ramsey's interview doesn't make the cut. Oh, wait, it wasn't even his interview. It was Vergara's. And yep, he just kept chiming in. It sounds like a paint. Yeah. Um, okay, this is my interview. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. 
So, when this video resurfaced in 2019, the internet almost cancelled Ramsey for his sexist remarks and sexual innuendos towards the actress. At first, everything was cool. Vergara showed pictures of her trip to Italy. It was all fun and innocent. But then, Ramsey started making mean comments that went too far. He even joked about Sophia enjoying pizza in a way that made everyone uncomfortable. You don't eat pizza with a knife and a fork. You just pick it up and stick it in. Of course, you have to take it like this. Vergara at one point stated, I never scream like that, to which Ramsey touched her and said this. I'm yes. in the bedroom. Damn, that was cringe. And from there on, things only got harder to watch. I mean, where was the need to insult her son's name? Manolo is just a, a Hispanic name. It's Not a, everything needs a meaning. Oh, really? Yes. No. That's yeah. correct. Right? It sounds like a paint. Yeah. Well, humor and lighthearted banter have their place. It's crucial to be mindful of the impact our words and actions can have on others, particularly in a professional setting. Vergara's body language and reactions, as described, speak volumes about her discomfort, and it's unfortunate that Ramsey continued to push the boundaries despite these signals. The reaction from fans and viewers, as seen in the YouTube comments, reflects a growing awareness of the importance of creating safe and respectful environments. People are increasingly attuned to instances where behavior crosses the line, and they are quick to call out such conduct. This viewer rightly pointed out an incident back in Season 2, where Ramsey's comments were just straight up creepy. So, it was two hours since the restaurant started serving, and nearly every customer had their main course. Except for one lady. So she went up to the kitchen and confronted Ramsey. There were many other ways he could have handled the situation, but instead, he chose to say this. Would you mind taking your breath off my hot plate? Yeah, look at that. How can I serve food with those fucking things there? <laughs> but hey. This lady was a fighter. She wasn't about to put up with that humiliation on national television. Chicken. To the boomers watching this, this ain't us being a snowflake. He cannot serve food, because why? He was too distracted by that customer's breasts? Wow, did he even hear himself? God, I love Ramsey, but I expect better from someone with three daughters and a wife. Come on, man. Whew. Your boy over here at FT hit the respect women juice real hard this morning. Moving on, I cannot begin to recount the number of times he's made appearance-related insults. I'm talking about insults related to the contestants' height and weight. I mean, how are those going to help them improve their culinary skills, exactly? Viewers think that this chef from season 3 was set up by producers, just for comedic relief. What happened there? Did you pull the skin off with your teeth? So, here's what this viewer had to say, and I think we can all agree that Eddie's elimination didn't make any sense. They claim that Eddie wasn't the weakest link on the team, and Josh could have gone home instead in episode 2. What are your thoughts on this, though? Anyway, nobody can disagree about the fact that Ramsey's behavior towards him during the elimination was very controversial. Eddie, take your jacket off and get out of Hell's Kitchen. Yes, sir. And as you probably guessed, Ramsey's been criticized hard for being unnecessarily mean here. What's more controversial was Rock's reason for nominating him. Do you remember this? Why have you nominated Eddie? I feel that Eddie is a small guy, and I'm not sure when he can come out of that shell and be an asset to our team. I mean, he didn't choose to be born with that disability. It seems like in the world today that people look at little guys like they can't get stuff done. And that's partially why I'm here. You know, show them what I got. And it disgusted many viewers. Some said that insults are a part of the show, but just like I said before, and it's worth reiterating that it's a cooking show, so attacking a person's physical traits is not cool. And thankfully, many of you get this. Like this viewer right here said, this is a culinary show, and insulting someone for anything other than their culinary skills is completely off limits. Now, Sarah Horowitz was pathetic, both as a chef and a person. Her attitude was horrible, and she was a saboteur. Yet, viewers found it offensive when Ramsey kept labeling her as this. Hey, you. Got for you. You useless cow. Oh, wait. There was also this time as well. Missy, Missy, come here, you fat-mouthed little stupid. 
If you didn't know, Ramsay opened a restaurant called The Fat Cow in 2012, and the British tabloid, The Sun, asked if he named it after one of his insults against Sarah. Since its grand opening in 2012, The Fat Cow has become the center of a legal storm for Ramsay. Did you ever find that connection, or is it just the media? It all began when a contractor brought forth a lawsuit demanding more than $45,000 in unpaid bills. The shadow of a huge financial dispute hung over the restaurant, tarnishing its reputation. But the legal storm didn't stop there. Employees joined the chorus of discontent, filing a class action lawsuit. Their grievances painted a grim picture of the workplace. Allegations of unpaid minimum wages, skipped meals and breaks without proper compensation, overtime wages left unpaid, and more. He also faced a hefty $10 million lawsuit from his own business partner, Rowan Siebel. The accusations hit hard, claiming that Ramsey mishandled a critical trademark issue related to the fat cow. The allegations took a more complex turn, accusing Ramsey of creating a new company with new partners, all while secretly brokering a deal with the restaurant's landlord. And what was the intention, you ask? Well, it was to have this entirely new dining establishment in the very space where the fat cow once stood. But get this, Siebel's claim adds another layer to the intrigue asserting that this new restaurant, dubbed GR Roast, was set to make a splash on Hell's Kitchen. Well, did it work? Um, I'll leave that up to you. But here's the thing, it failed. The restaurant couldn't survive and ended up closing in 2014. One user here said what we are all thinking, and it's how body shaming is completely unnecessary and rude, but also the fact that his intentions are good. He just needs to work on his language. Anyway, I really felt bad for Rob, who bore the brunt of constant body shaming jokes from Ramsey during the reward in season eight, episode six. Right, Tony, what your magic? Make Rob look like 95 pounds. If that wasn't enough, take a look at this one. It looks like you just swallowed the sofa. <laughs> And viewers have called it outright bullying. Like this one rightly pointed out Ramsey and his mean comments. He loves to target short people and those who are overweight whenever he gets the chance. And it's nothing but downright discriminating. I mean, like, hell yeah. Body shaming jokes should never be mistaken for humor. In fact, they wield a damaging influence, perpetuating and normalizing harmful beliefs, attitudes, and behaviors towards plus-size and fat individuals. Such jokes strike at the core of a person's insecurities. Fat people already face a lot of discrimination, and even if the target appears to handle it with grace, the depth of trauma or insecurity these remarks can trigger remains concealed. But Ramsey definitely seems to have become more sensitive and open-minded over the years. In 2021, he took to Instagram Live to say how proud he was of his daughter Matilda Ramsey, also known as Tilly. He praised her for standing up for herself when a presenter named Steve Allen called her a chubby little thing after she did really well on the TV show Strictly Come Dancing. You see, Ramsey wanted to show his support for Tilly and her decision not to let mean words affect her. So I think it was a breath of fresh air to see that level of um, stand up and we're not going to tolerate that. Well done, chef. That's what I was talking about. Quite the turnaround, right? Now, this viewer is convinced that the producers of the show make the men act creepy every time a woman is on screen. Here's what this user had to say about it. Every time there's a new woman on screen, it cuts to the men saying creepy shit. This takes me back to the controversial moment when Paul from season nine did this. Oh, I got a picture now. <laughs> Enjoy your win on the yacht by all means, bro, but that was invasive. It's definitely icky, right? Has nobody on the team heard of consent? And what was this? Ah. Oh. It's definitely interesting to see Natalie a little tipsy. Rarely essential to the narrative, sometimes the show will voyeuristically zoom in on the woman's body parts or hypersexualize them. Many viewers have pointed out that the editing on the show, especially the earlier seasons, panders to the male gaze, like this one right here. Now, before you accuse this video of being too woke, ask yourself if any of these behaviors are socially acceptable in today's day and age. And well, it won't surprise you why these examples made it to the list today. Which also reminds me of Josh Travolto, who found himself in a controversy of his own, where he earned the wrath of netizens because of this comment he made towards Nick. He's a Susie homemaker. Like, 
In 2023, I don't think I should be explaining why that's homophobic. What's more, the internet was up in flames about it. One user pointed out that his comments were nothing but mean. The dude thought that bringing someone else down would make himself look better, but that was definitely not the case. The guy is clearly homophobic, and honestly, that's just pathetic. After the blue team lost the homecoming dance dinner service, they had to pick two members to possibly leave the competition. When they talked about it, Nick and Millie thought about nominating Josh. But here's where things got interesting. Josh didn't agree with their choice. Instead, he thought Nick and Randy should be considered. I'm gonna have to disagree with that. I have to go Nick and Randy. You see, he had a reason. He felt that Nick had an easier job that night working on the garnish station. Josh thought that station was simpler. When Nick stuck with his choice, Josh got pretty upset. He called Nick's decision crazy and said he wouldn't be pushed around by someone he thought was not as strong, calling him that. And it rightfully pissed Nick off. You don't know how to respect people. You don't have the ball take over. Josh. And if you think you can run Stop 20... Stop talking over me, Josh. You're a f***ing dick. But hey. We all know who had the balls and the talent to back their talk. Now for La Piste de la Resistance, nobody is as controversial as this guy in the HK community. The only thing I'm gonna lose to a woman is like an ironing contest. He is the textbook definition of misogyny. Seriously, who raised him? Spoiler alert, they lost. We're gonna win because we're men. This ain't the Dustin housekeeping challenge here. Yeah, the red team ended up winning the chicken cutting challenge, so I guess his outdated theory can retire. Aww, cute. We're gonna win because we're f***ing men here, come on. Not like he displayed any shred of skills. Risotto? Burnt. Halibut? Raw. Even something as simple as sauce? Yeah, he made it and it was compared to snuff. Now, people wonder if his sexist views were just exaggerated on TV, and let me tell you, they were not, as evidenced by his social media. His Twitter account was a rabbit hole, and the amount of filth he shared shows what a disgusting pervert he is. Like, check this out for instance. Perhaps there is someone who could give him a tough competition. The blue team never had any drama until the females came aboard, and that's when the ship sunk. And wait for it. And that's exactly why I demo Marines and I send them back where I came from. Ah, Frank Calla, the nation is honored. After this video was posted on the Facebook page of the group End Gender Bias in the Military, the Marine Corps condemned Calla's sexist comments. He was removed from the commandant's staff and reassigned to the Marine Enlisted Aid Program. He posted a video apologizing, but people weren't convinced. His words looked scripted and didn't feel genuine. I mean, go ahead and watch this, and don't forget to let me know what you think about it. I want to apologize for my comments made shortly after my elimination on Hell's Kitchen Friday night. But you know what? I think he's just a sore loser. And I am sure this is a moment we all remember by heart. Yeah, his excuse after Ashley with her basic burgers won the jacket challenge against him. She only won because I lost. That's not a winner. That's, that's not a winner. Nobody has the time or crayons to explain the flaws in his logic. I'm just surprised he could fit his head that far up his own ass, considering he was so full of shit. And nope, I'm not the only person who thinks this. Just take a look at what a few viewers had to say. You see, this guy here really made a name for himself. But not for his culinary skills in Hell's Kitchen, but for his blatant disregard for women. He made it his life's goal to look down upon them, and let's just say, it didn't end well for him. One time, upon losing a culinary round on the show against a woman, this was his remark. And it speaks volumes. Now, what do you think are the most controversial moments from the show? Let me know in the comments down below. As you might remember, during the dinner service, Andrea was assigned to the garnish station. And unfortunately, she made a couple of crucial mistakes. To start off with, she started prepping her garnishes before the entrees were even ready. And to top it off, she cooked potatoes in a cold pan. And Ramsey wasn't too pleased and called her out on it. You can say Andrea was caught in a tough spot. On one hand, Ramsey kept yelling at her to speed up, but she knew that rushing could lead to a chaotic performance, which is exactly what happened. Andrea was so frustrated that she almost threw out the potatoes, but Ramsey intervened just in time. But things took a turn for the worse when Chef Ramsey called out the next order, and Andrea didn't respond. 
No answer. I'm not in the best of moods, huh? That's I don't like being ignored in my own kitchen. Yes, chef. What's going? Like he said, he clearly wasn't in the best of moods. And so, he asked her to repeat what he had just said, but she couldn't remember the details. I have no idea, Chef. Oh my god almighty. Girl, if only you paid attention. Robert, realizing the importance of the garnish station being ahead by 30 seconds, knew that they were in trouble if Andrea didn't know what the tickets called for. Meanwhile, Ramsey called her out for repeatedly not knowing what she was doing and asked the rest of the team to recite the order. Unfortunately, everyone stumbled over their words, which only added to Ramsey's frustration. And so what did our man have to do? He had to do something he absolutely hates, which is to call out the order again. But Andrea got it right this time, right? Weirdly, she couldn't recite the order back accurately and that was the last straw for Ramsey. So what did he do next, you ask? Well, take a look at this. It seemed like she was ready to walk out through the front door, but Jean-Philippe stepped in and prevented her from leaving. Should he have maybe just let her leave? Well, I think that would have gone down as one of the craziest exits from the competition. But it's crazy how the charged up energy of the kitchen influences the customers as well. It's hilarious and hysterical how they wanted to boss around Ramsey. The first thing that comes to mind is obviously this one. Why is there no pumpkin in my risotto? Right, can you get out of the way? Want spaghetti, want risotto? Yes? Oh, are you gonna always gonna be that rude and interrupt when I'm trying to talk? I just want more pumpkin, that's all I want. If Ramsey took a pause, it means he's absolutely gonna tear you apart. Pumpkin, I'll ram it right up your f***ing ass. Would you like it whole or diced? I bet the customer was feeling quite butthurt after this, but this customer totally deserved it. He was not only trying to interrupt the service, but also had the audacity to approach the kitchen. And Ramsey, as usual, has his own way of dealing with Karens. Okay, he heard you, ma'am. I think he made your point. And now would be a safe time to leave. But nope, she doesn't stop there. Chef! Right, don't whistle at me. I'm not your f***ing dog, yeah? You look more like a dog than I do. She went one step further and showed exactly how entitled she was. I can't believe she just did that. How dare she whistle at the great Ramsey? That's like so degrading. What is he, your pet dog or something? Well, at least he doesn't beg for attention like you do. Keep barking up the wrong tree, you creep. And I can't help but bring up this one as well. A very honorable mention right here, guys. Buddy, hey, hey, about not, what kind of education right now, right now, right now, right now. Okay, so, sir, you're out of here. So he was a typical douche who not only ordered a pizza from an external restaurant to be delivered right to Chef Ramsay's domain, but assaulted his maitre d' as well. As if that wasn't enough, he then tried to justify his actions by claiming to hold a doctorate degree. But Jean-Philippe showed a lot of class and grace, reminding him that his degree doesn't make him educated. Do you have a doctorate? I do have an education. Do you have a doctorate? I guess this bully just wanted some screen time. And he got it all the same. So now I've gone over contestants, our man Ramsey, and even the customers in Jean-Philippe, all who lost it on the show. But this list is incomplete without mentioning this next moment. What are you doing? Get that tape off of there. And get the back in there. You think I'm stupid? Yep. Sue Chef Scott isn't one to be messed with. And he certainly isn't gullible. Remember how Andrew in season one got chewed out by him for trying to cheat his way out of a punishment? Season one was a long, long time ago, so if you don't remember this, here's a refresher. The night before the next dinner service in episode six, Ramsey dropped a bombshell by announcing that both teams would be creating their own menus. It was time for some culinary creativity to shine, but things quickly got interesting on the blue team. Andrew suggested a braised salmon dish for their menu. However, Ralph, ever the opinionated teammate, shut down the idea. I've got my main. What are you thinking? It's a uh, braised salmon. I think I'm not big on salmon myself. I think halibut's great because I think people like halibut. Sensing a bit of a tiff, Andrew blamed Ralph when they lost the blind taste challenge as well. 
which led to their second punishment. Meanwhile, to stir things up, Ramsey locked their storeroom for the night, right where their precious baby chickens were kept and gave them only one attempt to crack the combination lock. Finally, the blue team managed to crack the lock and retrieve their prized poultry, but leave it to Andrew to hatch a plan on the spot. He had Jessica hand him some masking tape to seal the latch. Unfortunately, sous chef Scott had his eagle eyes on them and caught Andrew red-handed. You guys yeah. fucked it up, you get a punishment, you don't and rig it so it works for you. You blew it, pay the consequences, got it? Yeah, looks like Andrew's attempt to get the chicken out didn't work at all. But did any of you ever have a friendship that turned sour? Well, I can think of two or three guys from high school, but that was nothing like how these two friends quickly fell apart and turned on each other. Who would admit to the sh You told me to run the fish. That's what my fish up the first time. How many of my steaks came back to Call was off. The alliance that started as a friendly bond in season 10 turned into an all out war that had viewers reaching for the volume control thanks to an epic showdown between Kimmy and Robin. This battle was like a verbal explosion, complete with insults and name calling. Child, like, no, it hit me. Hit me. Viewers were already taking sides, and I think they were mostly leaning towards Kimmy. According to this Reddit user, Kimmy rightfully called out the fact that Robin ignored her correct input on the food. Kimmy also said she acknowledges it was her fault for not being more assertive in her position. However, Robin wouldn't own up to her fault, and instead kept trying to egg Kimmy into a fight for selling her out to Ramsey. That's the reaction of a legit bully. Kimmy did get annoying, but that was only because she was defeated and emotional. But one thing I can't stand on a reality show is someone who creates drama intentionally or crosses over into bullying other contestants instead of looking inward. And look how things turned out. The same night of the fight, Kimmy was successful, and Robin had a shit service. One viewer also said how, aside from Christina, no one on the red team had any level of personal responsibility, accountability, or self-awareness. Well, that's certainly a point I completely agree with. So, whose side are you on? Let me know in the comments below. It's quite understandable that every contestant wants to put their best foot forward, but Jeff Lepoff thought he could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Ramsey. Jeff, in all his audacity, decided to challenge his authority. He requested five minutes for the lamb, but Chef Ramsey wasn't having it. He reminded Jeff that he had asked for four minutes, and boy did that set Ramsey off. 30 customers not eating. Now back on your section. Accusations were thrown, egos clashed, and Jeff's arrogance didn't exactly win him any points. Oh, really? Why? Because I'm not a quitter. You're not a quitter. <laughs> I, you're not a cook either. In a moment of frustration, Jeff muttered the A word under his breath, and oh no, big boy, that was a huge mistake right there. Little did he know that sous chef Marianne had ears like a hawk. She caught wind of that insult and made sure Jeff paid the price for it. But when Ramsey summoned him, guess what Jeff did? What to tell you? You're an asshole. That's not cool, Jeff. Unbelievable. That is not cool. People have red flags and there are those that have green flags, but Jeff chose to wave his white flag. Yep, he gave up. Now, we'll never know what Jeff's exit interview would have been like because it never made it to air. Viewers had differing opinions on this clash. While some thought Ramsey was being a bully, others thought he was just showing Jeff his place. There are also those who believe that Ramsey was responsible for killing his spirit. After all, the guy tried to pick himself up by saying he's not a quitter, but Gordon majorly slammed him down emotionally. Now. Coming to perhaps the most intense moment in the history of the show. Speaking of a rebel, and obviously without a cause, I'm talking about Joseph the infamous Tinnelly. Joseph was tasked with naming the first nominee and providing a reason. He decided to take a detour from the expected route. Instead of simply following the instructions, he opted for a sassy response, stating that his teammates knew who they were and could speak for themselves. Of course, Ramsey wasn't about to let that slide. A smart ass. I asked you to tell me. But did that stop Joseph? Not in the slightest. 
finalist. When asked a second time, he finally named Tony and Andy as the nominees, but with a touch of defiance, I might add. Ramsey clearly lost his patience and resorted to calling Joseph slightly stupid and gave him one more chance to answer the question properly. Yet, Joseph couldn't resist his stubborn streak. Once again, he named Tony, but stubbornly added that Tony knew the reason why. Oh, Joseph, playing with fire, are we? But wait, there's more. Joseph decided it was the perfect time to confront Ramsey, claiming that they chose as a group and didn't need any peer pressure. Oh, is it, Joseph? What should we do, give you a medal? I ain't no fuck, Chef. I don't give a fuck. I ain't no bitch. Joseph may think he's a tough cookie, but all he was really serving up was a half-baked attitude with a side of verbal diarrhea. As if insulting Ramsey wasn't enough, he also started insulting his fellow contestants. Shut the f***ing mouth. What did she do right now? Amidst the chaos, Ramsey attempted to defuse the situation and reason with Joseph in a calm manner. However, Joseph had other plans. You wanna talk some shit? Let's go step outside. I ain't here for that, dog. You wanna talk about fighting? Oh, wow. You wanna get rough? Do you think I'm scared? Huh? Of course, Chef Ramsay wasn't about to tolerate such disrespect. He sternly informed Joseph that he lacked any semblance of respect, making it clear that he had overstayed his welcome. It was time for Joseph to make his exit. And what an exit it was! Watch the step. This was gold. And I'm still waiting for that contestant who would be able to beat the level of drama Joseph Tinnelly served us up on reality TV. So, which is the most intense moment that you can think of? Let me know in the comments, or join me in my Discord where we can discuss all of this and more. What's more, for those of you who want something extra, I've also got an exclusive server just for you. But before you head out, make sure to like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications. And if you thought this video was crazy, then don't forget to check out my post right here. It's even crazier.